Welcome to Sounds of Resistance channel. February 24th, 2022, we have left eight months behind in the war between Ukraine and Russia, which started because of Putin's personal ambitions. During this time, a large number of Russian soldiers lost their lives. And the only responsible for this situation is Russian President Vladimir Putin. With the war initiated by Putin, not only Russian soldiers died, this war also caused the death of Ukrainian soldiers and Ukrainian civilians. Ukrainian forces did not attack, except for military targets, both on the territory of Ukraine and on the territory of Russia. Despite this, Russian forces attacked and continue to attack civilian areas of Ukraine at the behest of Vladimir Putin. As is known, just before the annexation of the four regions of Ukraine by Russia, the Ukrainian forces launched successful counterattacks in the Kharkiv region. We can say that this development triggered Russia's annexations. It can be said that Russian leader Vladimir Putin made these annexations to intimidate the Ukrainian forces, but the Ukrainian forces were not afraid of Putin's move, and the Ukrainian army understood that it needed to be quicker to save its homeland. After the annexation decisions, the Ukrainian forces accelerated the counteroffensive in Kherson. As part of the Kherson counterattack, Ukrainian forces liberated many settlements from Russian persecution. Russian forces started missile attacks from their positions in order to prevent the acceleration of the Ukrainian forces in Kherson. Before the massive counterattack of the Ukrainian forces began, the Russian forces, while in a defensive position, again used long-range missile strikes to try to prevent the counterattack of the Ukrainian forces and to hold the temporarily occupied areas. But the tactics of Russian forces in the defensive position did not work and the Ukrainian forces began their counterattack. The same tactic used by the Russian forces is not enough to stop the momentum that the Ukrainian forces are gaining and the Ukrainian forces continued to advance noticeably. The reason why the missile attacks of the Russian forces were not effective is that the Ukrainian air defense forces successfully destroyed the missiles fired by the Russian forces in the air. The Ukrainian Air Force Command stands like a steel wall against the attacks of the Russian and prevents the Russian from achieving success with these attacks. Russian forces know that the Ukrainian warriors attach great importance to the survival of civilians. For this reason, civilian settlements and civilian infrastructures are often the target of Russian attacks. As the day broke out on the Ukrainian soil, the Russians launched a massive missile attack on Ukrainian territory. The target of Russian forces was again attacking critical civilian infrastructure facilities in various regions of Ukraine. From the city of Volgodonsk, in the Rostov region, close to the ferry border between Ukraine and Russia. At least 10 Russian Tu-160 and Tu-95 strategic bombers took off from the military airport to launch their missiles at Ukrainian forces and Ukrainian civilians. These aircraft launched a total of 70 km 101 type cruise missiles. Simultaneously with these attacks, Russian warships attacked Ukraine with a salvo of 16 caliber missile from the Black Sea. In the areas of responsibility of the Southern Air Command, Air Command Center and Western Air Command of the Ukrainian Air Force, aircraft, anti-aircraft missile units and mobile groups destroyed 18 Russian cruise missiles. The missiles destroyed by the Ukrainian forces include 13 X-101 and X-555 type missiles and 5 caliber missiles. During these attacks, 15 missiles that were not destroyed by the Ukrainian forces hit various points in the Ukrainian territory, so there was not much danger in the places where the missiles fell. During the attacks, no important information regarding loss of life and property was disclosed. Although Russian troops tried to prevent Ukrainian forces from counterattacking, Ukrainian forces continued to build the necessary military infrastructure for counterattacks. In one of the areas that Russian and Ukrainian troops have illegally annexed and subjected to martial law by Russian President Vladimir Putin near the strategic industrial port city of Kherson in the south, the two sides faced major clashes. There were reports of clashes and evacuations in the Kherson region as the Kremlin government sought to subdue the occupied country with more missile and drone strikes on critical civilian infrastructure. Faced with the setbacks, problematic mobilization of Russian troops on the battlefield, increased criticism at home and abroad, and international sanctions in the annexed regions. The dictatorial leader declared martial law in the Kherson, Luhansk, Donetsk, and Zaporizhia regions in order to defend Russian authority. 
there is an unstable situation in illegally occupied territories. It was also very interesting to see the Russian military officials who replaced the civilian leaders appointed by the Kremlin as the frequency of clashes increased in the chief city of the Kherson region, especially within the scope of the martial law that came into force to defend the counterattacks of Ukraine. Because the Russian administration began to urgently evacuate its officials from these regions. Prior to February 24, 2022, the city of Kherson, with a population of approximately 284,000, was one of the first urban areas Russia captured when it invaded Ukraine. The reason for this was that the Ukrainian forces in the region retreated to Kyiv at the start of the war, preventing the loss of military manpower. The city of Kherson is also the largest city owned by the Russian forces. Because of its key industries and large river port, Kherson is also primarily targeted for both Ukrainian and Russian forces. Before the start of the counterattack of the Ukrainian forces in the Kherson region, sabotage and assassination attempts against the Russians by the defenders of Ukraine were among the reports of the officials in Kherson, who were deployed by the Russians. These events are seen as one of the most active Ukrainian resistance movements in the occupied territories. Officials appointed by the Russians urged the army to build fortifications. Some of the Russian senior officials made a proposal to move 15,000 people assigned to the region by the Moscow administration from the city and the surrounding regions. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky underlined that Ukrainian forces carried out 15 attacks on Russian military strongholds in the Kherson region. Simultaneously, with Zelensky's rhetoric, the spokesperson of the Russian Military of Defense stated that the Kremlin forces repelled attempts to advance with tanks in the Ukrainian villages Sukhanove, Novokamyanka, and Chornoviar, Kherson. In this process, Ukrainian authorities and Russian authorities blame each other for the attacks on the Kakovka Dam and hydroelectric power station, about 70 km from the city of Kherson. Russian official in the region, Vladimir Leontiev, stated that Ukrainian forces carried out five missile attacks on the Kakovka Dam and hydroelectric power station. Vladimir Leontiev accused Ukraine of cutting off the critical canal supplying water to annex Crimea if the dam facilities in the region were destroyed. Zelensky claimed that the Russians are planning to blow up the dam and power plant with acts of terrorism to expose 8 million cubic meters and flood Kherson and dozens of areas inhabited by hundreds of thousands of people. The president of Ukraine conveyed this claim to the Council of Europe and stated that he predicted that Russia would blame Ukraine from now on. None of the claims could be independently verified. Russia's new military commander in Ukraine this week expressed the threat posed by Ukraine's offensive against Kherson. The British Ministry of Defense underlined that the Russian authorities are seriously considering withdrawing their forces from the area west of the Dnieper River to a large extent. It is estimated that a target of 300,000 people for the reserve troops, which Putin ordered with the mobilization order last month, will be reached by the end of this month. Putin visited training center in Russia's Ryazan region and started work to resolve the training and material problems for the newly mobilized troops. In an effort to propagate Putin, who has lost the public's trust, Russian television broadcast footage of the Russian leader lying under the net at the military training center wearing goggles and ear protection. Putin and Defense Minister Sergei Shoga were seen among the soldiers dressed in bulletproof vests and helmets and armed. In another sign of Russia's hesitant mobilization, Ukrainian officials stated that more than 3,000 Russians are seeking a hotline for soldiers who do not want to join the war and want to surrender, emphasizing that they will welcome the Russian soldiers who will come to Ukraine as part of the mobilization. In fact, the name of this helpline was determined as I want to live by the Ukrainian armed forces and the number of Russians calling this hotline is increasing day by day. The Ukrainian government, on the other hand, guaranteed the safety of life of those who surrendered, stating that the provisions of Geneva Agreement would be applied to those who surrender by calling this line. To be notified of new videos, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.